Welcome to Cirrus Data Solutions DMS version 5 demo. DMS version 5 is the next generation copy data management solution with features for rapid data protection and for recovery, development, and QA copy lifecycle management and automation, as well as remote replication for legacy and cloud environments. The DMS version 5 consists of redundant TDI nodes that perform seamless and transparent zero downtime data path interception of the production environment for fiber channel and for iSCSI SANS. The I.O. streams are then mirrored synchronously or periodically to the Phoenix server nodes here where they form a fully deduped unique block repository so that the mirrored and compressed data is stored strictly once on any attached secondary storage. A set of copy data management or CDM policies can be defined to dictate how frequently to perform snapshots or to further replicate the data to other Phoenix nodes that are local or to a different data center or even to the cloud. The data protection and recovery is strictly on changed blocks. A mapping of block level changes is kept so that in the case of a catastrophic volume corruption or ransomware attack, the original data is repaired surgically in minutes, instead of being fully mirrored back, which may take hours or days. With built-in cloud and VM support, the DMS version 5 is truly a hyper-converged copy data management solution. This is the lab system with a Windows host with fiber channel storage from Extreme I.O. and Infinibox at the Syosset lab, intercepted by the TDI and mirrored to the Phoenix or DGS node. Replication is then established to the AWS Ohio region, and from there the data is further replicated to the Oregon region. Here's the Windows host representing an enterprise class application system such as an Oracle app. At the Disk Manager, we see that a number of LUNs are presented from Extreme I.O. and from Infinibox. For this demonstration, we'll use DMS version 5 to create a local CDM policy to protect these four drive letters, and we'll use Intel Iometer to drive traffic throughout the process, simulating a live production environment. An additional drive with some file data is also protected by another CDM policy, and we'll use this to show off replicating to the AWS cloud. Logging into the Phoenix box at the Syosset Fiber Channel Lab, we see the Windows box discovered by the TDI node with live fiber channel traffic. Here are the drives D, E, F, and G, and here's drive L. We're now ready to create our first copy data management, or CDM policy, to protect the first four drives. Let's create a CDM policy at the DMS5 in Syosset. Log in to the DMS Syosset node, open up the previously discovered My Oracle Windows host, and use the action button to create a CDM policy for the selected host. Now select the four drives D, E, F, and G. Click Create CDM Policy. The name of the policy defaults to the host name. Click Yes to activate it. So here's the policy detail. The Volume tab shows the four drives. They're all performing the initial sync, which is the copying of all the blocks from the source over to the destination. And it's done. Here's a graphical way to show that the source and the mirror are in sync by looking at the bubbles, writing to both and reading from only the primary. The default snapshot schedules are here, from one every 15 minutes to one every two weeks. Now let's create a second policy for drive L, and this time we'll enable replication as well. Let's set the name to My Oracle Drive L. Add Drive L to the policy. For the 15 minute schedule, let's enable replication. Before we can do that, we need to create a replication target so the system knows where to send the data. In order to do that, we need to first define a target Phoenix system at the remote site. 
In this case, it's AWS Ohio. Let's go online to the AWS console. The AWS DMS version 5 Phoenix node was implemented by clicking on the AWS Web Console AMI, which is a pre-created template that makes it very easy to deploy. Once running, we can click on the AWS Instance folder to get the IP address. Here it is. Let's log into the AWS Ohio DMS and make sure it's running and is named appropriately. It should be at the fresh running state, which is blank. Here it is. We'll log in and we'll call this node DMS5 Ohio. And it's done. Now let's go back to Syosset. Here we are waiting for the Ohio DMS5 IP address. And here it is. And the password. And now Syosset is linked to Ohio. We can now finish setting up the replication target for the policy. Let's name this target DMS5 Ohio T1. Now the 15 minute schedule is enabled with replication and it'll trigger replication every 15 minutes. Let's test the schedule by forcing it to run. And here it is. The first replication is triggered. The dedupe and compression makes replication really fast because drive L is mostly blank and only has a few hundred megabytes of real data. And now it's done. At DMS5 Ohio, a snapshot with the exact same timestamp is created. To see what files are in the replicated snapshot, we'll use the time machine to create a clone. Because everything's virtual, there's no real copying of the data blocks, so the whole process is very fast, only a few seconds in this case. Let's assign this clone to the Windows machine at AWS Ohio. Before we can do that, the Ohio Windows host must be associated to the DMS5 Ohio. This means we have to add the DMS5 Ohio IP address to the iSCSI target list of the Ohio Windows and create a Phoenix host entity. using the auto-discovered iSCSI initiator identity. Then we assign the clone to it. Rescan using Disk Manager at the iSCSI Windows hosts. And here it is, drive L, which is actually assigned to drive letter D, and it has the 299 megabytes of data. Let's further replicate to the AWS region at Oregon, simply because we can. The Oregon DMS version 5 is previously configured as a remote target. We simply configure the policy to enable the replication using the DMS 5 Oregon T1 target. And it's done. Next time, when Syosset synchronizes a new snapshot to Ohio, It'll then be further replicated to Oregon. In fact, you can keep cascading the replication chain to go from A to B to C, and even back to A. The DMS5 lab here is configured with continuous mirroring for some drives, so let's demonstrate the first recovery mode using mirror stand-in, which avoids an outage caused by a catastrophic primary storage problem with the hardware. Here's the policy detail that shows the host is writing to the primary and is mirrored by our TDI to the Phoenix storage. When the primary I.O. is stopped, within seconds, TDI will swing the I.O. to the right. Or this can be done manually, which is useful for a planned outage of the primary for upgrades or for physical relocation. Let's trigger the stand-in.
and done. Now this shows that all the reads and writes are going to the Phoenix storage. The primary is now playing dead and is totally quiet. In the meantime, this dirty map here is tracking all the differences between the primary and the Phoenix storage. Let's say the primary is repaired. We can simply disable the stand-in, like this, and now the primary is being resynced based on the dirty map. And now it's back online as the primary. Writes are going to both sides, but reads are again only from the primary. So if the above was a real emergency, the stand-in feature would have just prevented an outage. RPO 0, RTO 0. Let's now consider data loss situations that are not caused by a hardware issue, but instead are caused by human error or malware, such as ransomware, where some bad writes caused some kind of catastrophic corruption. Let's go to the production Windows host at Syosset, and let's pick on drive F. So let's say ransomware has gotten into your system and drive F becomes compromised. Here we'll simulate this by formatting it and putting a volume label called ransomware. And that's done. Now let's leave a ransomware signature so we can get paid. There it is. Formatting, like ransomware, only affects the critical file system pointer blocks, so only a small number of bad writes are done to render the entire volume useless. So how do we get back the data? Note that we have plenty of snapshots that were automatically taken. But can we actually recover to the point in time just before that format command was executed in order to have little or no data loss? Fortunately, with the MS5, the answer is yes. The Time Machine feature can use either a snapshot for point-in-time recovery or use the CDP journal for an any point-in-time recovery. Let's open up the Time Machine. Here are the two choices, one for discrete, which is snapshot-based recovery, and the other is continuous, which uses the CDP journal. In this case, let's use the CDP journal to go back to the point just before the format command. Before we do that, we have to put this corrupted volume offline so we can do block level repair using the DMS5. And open up the continuous recovery. You can see that these are all the writes with different amounts per unit time. You can zoom in, and again. So here's the last batch of writes, which must be the format command. Let's pick a point just before that formatting, right there and click on Roll Back to repair or undo the damage caused by the format command or the ransomware, and done. Let's put the disk back online at the Windows host. And here it goes. The drive L has recovered back to the moment in time where we deleted a bunch of folders, but before the formatting. So that demonstrates the Time Machine feature, which can be used to perform snapshot-based point-in-time recovery or the CDP journal-based any point in time recovery. The last recovery feature is file-based recovery. Although DMS5 is fundamentally a block level protection and recovery system, it's possible to perform file-based recovery using the built-in volume wiki feature. This feature allows for full volume indexing of each snapshot that has a recognizable file system. Let's do a fuzzy search for, what's that file again? Street art or something. So let's just enter street and there it is. A bunch of matches. Seems like this is the one I want. Open it up for a preview. And yes, that looks right. So let's download this file. And there we go. The file's downloaded and I can copy it back to where it belongs or email it to somebody. So this concludes a demo of the many powerful capabilities of DMS version 5, which eliminates outages or data loss due to various real-life scenarios. Recovery from hardware problems is by Mirror Stand-In, which has zero RPO and zero RTO. The recovery using Time Machine for point-in-time or any point-in-time recovery yields minimum RPO. And because we surgically copy back just the block level differences instead of copying back the entire volume, the RTO is at an absolute minimum. 
Finally, the Volume Wiki allows for fuzzy search and recovery of any lost file without resorting to rolling back the entire volume back to a moment of time. It also avoids having to test mount 100 snapshots just to find a lost file with the correct version. This concludes the demonstration of the powerful recovery features of DMS version 5. Thank you for watching.